I'm standing at the Gorton Theater where we are kicking off this series of lessons and carols. We were going to be downtown. We talked about all kinds of different places we might sort of bring you this unfolding drama. Uh, I was initially thinking that maybe at that little uh, museum complex where I could point to Adler Planetarium and the Shedd Aquarium and the Field Museum because that sort of really captures a whole lot of what goes on in Genesis chapter 1. But we are here in order to uh, introduce you to what's happening, to what's going to be happening over the context of this Advent. So I am assuming that you not only know these great Chicago institutions, Adler, Shedd, and, and the Field Museum, I'm assuming you also know something about Genesis 1, which is among the most famous words of all time and also among the most controversial words of all time, and which bring us into the first of the nine lessons that we are going to look at. The words of Genesis are controversial in part because they make a claim to ultimate reality. They suggest that there actually is a story. Some people think that history is cyclical. Some people think that history has absolutely no direction. Some people think that history has no meaning. But as uh, Christians, we recognize that uh, there is, in fact, a story, that the Bible isn't just a collection of random ideas and inspirational tales and morality lessons, that it is a story. And what we get with lessons and carols, what we get the service of lessons and carols, is the unfolding drama that we find in the Bible. So as you may know, the series of Lessons and Carols, this is a service that was started 150 years ago, and uh, it has spread throughout the world. And basically, it captures uh, four of the eight big themes that we find in Scripture. So Scripture's eight themes would be creation, fall, promise, incarnation, and then you have crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, and return. So Lessons and Carols only does the first half. Uh, we've done this, uh, we've, we've had a Lessons and Carols service for, uh, since Christ Church started, and, and so I've done, you know, 20 of these, and I've always pointed out that, uh, uh, look, if you, want the, if you want the rest of the story, you have to come back after Christmas. Uh, but we're just doing the first four. So that's what happens in this series of Lessons and Carols, is we begin at the beginning, and we are, we're, we're there for the promise, we're there for the setup of what's going to happen beginning with Genesis chapter 12. So if I was going to tell you more about Genesis, if we were going to do a deep dive into Genesis, I'd point out it was written by Moses towards the end of his life, uh, towards the end of the 40 years that the Jews have in the wilderness. We'd talk about how it, uh, it leads with God's creative activity. It doesn't lead with the proof of God. The Bible doesn't start giving us the cosmological or the ontological or the teleological arguments for the existence of God. It just starts with God, and it starts with God as the creator, and he is powerful. He creates everything out of nothing, not just even simply out of air, right? It's not that he starts, it's not like we create where we start with wood and we make a chair. It's that God creates and he starts with nothing, not even air, and he makes a chair. He speaks everything into existence. So we got this wonderful, all-powerful God, and then we're going to see as soon as we sort of are... <laughs> Loving that, we have the fall, which leads into the promise that God gives us, and then that sets up the rest of Genesis. Genesis sort of breaks up. Genesis 1 through 3 is the, is the key part. All the big theological ideas, God, man, evil, salvation, marriage, science, all those things find their root in Genesis 1 through 3. And then Genesis 12 is where the story is going to happen, which is why we're in a, a theater, because uh, there's a sense in which at Genesis 12, the curtain goes up and we have the story that will unfold for the rest. So what's going to happen with each of these lessons and carols is that there's biblical passages that have been read. You've already had them read. And there's some artwork that accompanies that. And then uh, there is a carol, which is just a, a Christmas hymn. And so uh, we're about to sing uh, All Creatures of Our God and King which was uh, written a number of years ago. Uh, the lyrics were actually written by St. Francis of Assisi in the 13th century, put to music much later than that.
but it's a powerful uh, celebration of creation. And it, it's based on Psalm 148, which is a great psalm of creation and a psalm that calls on us and invites us to praise God for his creative power. So, as we will do uh, throughout all of the lessons and carols, you have been given the lesson, and now we're going to sing the carol. So I invite you to stand as we sing.